Hey guys, I'm Dan, one of the engineers at Mishimoto. Today I'm going to show you how to install our performance radiator for the 2006 to 2010 Chevy 2500 HD equipped with the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax. Let's check it out. Tools needed to install the Mishimoto performance intercooler for the 2006 to 2010 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD are pick tool, quarter drive ratchet, extension, 7 mil socket, 10 mil socket, 11 mil socket, 13 mil socket, 8 mm wrench, 10 mm wrench, 1 and an eighth wrench, pop clip pliers, water pump pliers, flathead screwdriver, coolant, and a coolant funnel. Installation time is 8 hours and is a 5 out of 5. We recommend that you bring this to a skilled professional to install. The first thing we're going to do in order to get to the lower hose to drain the coolant is we're going to remove the splash shield that goes between the bumper and the inner fender pan on the passenger side of the truck. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and remove the lower hose from the radiator. When we're removing it, we're just going to slowly slide it back because there's no drain plug on this radiator. So the way we're going to drain it is by slowly separating the hose from the rad and letting coolant bleed. Next step, remove the upper cooling hose from the radiator. Next, remove the 15 millimeter bolts that hold the lower splash shield to the truck. Next, remove the lower hose from the radiator and the engine, as well as from the two ancillary ports. In order to remove the rest of the hose, we're going to have to remove the factory intake box. First thing we're going to do is unplug the mass airflow sensor. Next, we're going to loosen the two clamps that hold the pipe onto the air box. You're going to want to remove the splash shields from both wheel wells in the front of the truck. To do this, we're going to remove the remaining four pop clips and five seven millimeter bolts. Next, remove the clamps that hold the hot side intercooler pipe to the intercooler. Next, remove the two retaining clips that hold the cold side intercooler pipe to the intake manifold and intercooler. Once you have the clips removed, go ahead and remove the pipe. Next, remove the eight pop clips that hold the upper radiator shroud to the radiator support. Once you have all the pop clips removed, go ahead and remove the shroud. Next, remove the top four 10 millimeter bolts from the grill. Carefully unclip the grill from the front of the truck. These grills tend to be really brittle, even with the newer truck. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts that hold each headlight onto the front of the truck. Once you get all the head bolts removed from the headlights, go ahead and unplug the electrical harnesses. Next, remove the headlights from the truck. Next, remove all the electrical connectors from the front hood latch support. Next, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the front transmission cooler to the hood release bracket. Next, remove the four 10 millimeter bolts from the bottom of the hood release support. Next, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts from the hood release bracket. These two bolts are located behind the bracket and in front of the radiator support beam. 
Once all the bolts are removed from the hood release support, go ahead and remove the cable from the hood release. Next, remove the hood release frame assembly from the front of the truck. Next, remove the two 10 millimeter bolts from the upper brackets on the AC condenser. Remove the pop clip that holds the control module to the fan shroud. Next, remove the four pop clips that hold the upper fan shroud to the lower fan shroud. Next, remove the overflow hose from the radiator. Next, unseat the lower fan shroud from the radiator. Do this by pulling up on the tabs on the sides of the fan shroud. Do the same for the other side. Next, remove the two transmission lines from the radiator. In order to do this, first remove the dust shield from the fitting, and then remove the retaining clip from the fitting, and then pull back on the line. Next, remove the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator and intercooler assembly to the ratchet port. Next, remove the 10 millimeter bolt from the fender support bracket. Once you've removed that bolt, go ahead and loosen the one 10 millimeter bolt on the fender. Next, remove the six 10 millimeter bolts from the bottom of the upper radiator support beam that holds the beam to the lower radiator support. Once you have all of them removed, go ahead and remove the radiator support beam from the truck. Okay, once you have the upper radiator support beam removed, you are good to remove the inner core and radiator assembly. Now, this unit is very heavy, so you might want to use a friend to help you lift it out of the truck. All right, now that we have the inner core and radiator assembly out of the truck, we're going to go ahead and remove the four 13 millimeter bolts to separate both units. Okay, let's take a look at the factory rad. Factory rad uses plastic end tanks that are crimped on with a gasket to an aluminum core. Over time, these end tanks start to fail, become brittle, start to crack from the amount of heat. This rad is not the rad that you want if you're depending on your truck. All right, now let's take a look at the Mishimoto radiator. The Mishimoto radiator has a full 100% brazed aluminum core and TIG welded aluminum end tanks. And not only does this radiator look good in the truck, but it's exactly what you need to get the dependability out of your truck. One of the other added right, bonuses about putting a Mishimoto, Mishimoto radiator, radiator in your truck Mishimoto is you get a drain plug. The factory radiator does not have one of these. And TIG welded we even CNC'd the bottom outlet. And not only does this radiator like look stop. good in the truck, before we can install this Mishimoto exactly radiator into the truck, to get the there's a couple of things we gotta do. Out of your truck. One, we gotta swap over the factory grommets. And two, we gotta swap over the transmission fittings. Okay guys, now it's time to hook our Mishimoto radiator back up to the inner cooler. Now being that this guy was so nice for letting us use his truck, we're going to hook him up with a Mishimoto performance inner cooler. Next install the inner cooler and radiator assembly into the truck. Remember this is very heavy so you might want to have a friend help you out. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the upper radiator support beam. All 
Once you have the radiator support beam back in place, go ahead and put in the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the inner core assembly to the support beam. Next, install the transmission lines. Remember, these are quick disconnects, so you're first gonna have to reinstall the retaining clip and then push the line into the fitting. You'll hear it click so you know that it's secured. Okay, now that we have the fan shroud fitted in, we can go ahead and install the, the, clip, the four pop clips that go from the upper shroud to the lower shroud. Okay, now it's time to reinstall the two bolts that hold the upper fan shroud to the radiator. Okay, now that the upper fan shroud is installed, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the control module to the, to the back face of the shroud. Once you finish that, go ahead and reinstall the overflow hose to the radiator. Okay, now it's time to install the upper radiator hose. Okay, now it's time to install the lower hose. You're gonna do this by feeding the lower hose up from underneath the truck. Next, reinstall the radiator support beam strut to the radiator support. Next, reinstall the hood release cable to the front hood release bracket. Next, loosely install the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the upper brackets for the AC condenser to the upper radiator support. Next, reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the upper part of the hood release bracket to the radiator support bracket. Next, reinstall the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the front transmission cooler to the hood release bracket. Once you have the headlights back in, go ahead and re-plug in all the electrical harnesses on the hood release bracket. Next, install the cold side pipe. Install the hot side boot to the inner cooler. Reinstall the passenger side splash shield. Okay, now it's time to reinstall the grill. Once you have the grill popped back in, go ahead and reinstall the four 10 millimeter. Next, reinstall the plastic radiator cover. Next, reinstall your air box. All right guys, now it's time to fill the cooling system. Remember to use a 50-50 mix of water and coolant. 
All right guys, now that we have the cooling system all filled up, we're gonna go ahead and turn the truck on and turn the heat on high. That'll help us get any of the rest of the air bubbles out of the cooling system. All right guys, that wraps it up on the install. Take your truck out for a spin and enjoy your new Mishimoto products.